Hello web developers, welcome to another project walkthrough. Uh, this is from Watts 3010 Introduction to Web Development. Uh, this is the embedded media assignment. So, uh, the embedded media assignment asks you to build a website for an animated short film by a company called Wayback. Uh, they made a, a film about a little monkey with superpowers and we're going to build an entire web page for it that includes the film itself in a video player as well as some other uh, different elements that we've uh, created from the different media. We're going to explore the way that HTML5 uh, handles audio and video as well as uh, choosing between different images uh, to, to choose the correct image. Um, so uh, we're going to start out by forking this into our personal account. I've already done that. Uh, you can see here that this is my personal um, copy of this repository, uh, my Sean R account, and I'm going to uh, bring that into my workspace in Code Envy. So I have uh, these projects here already. I'm going to um, import project uh, from GitHub, and I'm going to use the load repo button. Uh, using that load repo button is pretty important. It, it helps avoid a lot of problems. If you have different groups that you're a part of, they'll show up here under GitHub account. I just switch to my regular GitHub account and then I have to scroll down to Watts 3010 uh, and this is the embedded media project so I'm going to pick that and say import and then it will ask me what kind of machine I want set up uh, I'm going to leave it on blank and it will load up this project for me so here's the project itself I have uh, everything that I'd expect. There, there are video files in here, um, so are things that have to do with the video. Uh, so that's that's good to know about. Let's open up this workspace and get a little more uh, room here to to actually do some work. Um, now, one of the things is that we have the video here in a format WebM that is supported by um, quite a few things, and it's an open source format, so it's a perfectly fine video format, but we would like to get it into MP4 so that more browsers can natively play it uh, in a native player. To do that, we're going to use a transcoding application called Handbrake. Uh, Handbrake exists for all platforms, uh, and it's a solid open source project. If you prefer, you could use any other uh, transcoding application you wanted to, like maybe Adobe Media Encoder or um, any anything else that you might have already on your machine or that, that you're more comfortable using. As long as you can convert the video into an MP4 file, then you should be okay uh, to complete all of the work here. Uh, and we will get to that. And in order to do that as well, um, you will need to also go to uh, desktop.github.com and you will have to install local github. Now again, if you already have git installed locally, you can actually just use git locally. If you're more comfortable on the command line, that's fine. If you're more comfortable uh, with a different interface for git and github, that's fine too. Um, but you will need to clone this repo locally in order to do the video transcode and then actually move on. And so uh, here it's showing me the download from Mac OS because I'm on a Mac, but if you were on Windows machine, it would install the same way and it's, it's the same application on Windows and Mac. So uh, we'll, we'll use this application to actually do the clone and upload of the new video and everything. Uh, so there are a few different moving parts here. Be prepared for that. And uh, But now we can start digging in. So let's just look at the readme file and to get an idea of what it is that we're supposed to do. Um, we want to uh, create an elegant presentation for the content on the page. We want to fill in each section with appropriate content. We want to offer MP4 and WebM videos in a default, that means native, HTML5 video player. Uh, we want to style the containers and presentation of the audio and video to highlight the experience, making it more enjoyable for the users. So, you know, we, we want to highlight that you can play the video and audio and make sure that that's good looking and, and pleasurable for users. Uh, we want to provide internal links for quick access to different portions of the page. So those are uh, the internal uh, anchor tags pointing to you know element IDs is what we're looking at there. Um, and then we want to use positioning and hover effects to make a persistent share box with social network links. So persistent means that it should always be visible to the user even when they scroll away. So that means it will probably use the fixed positioning. Um, we want to complete all of the to-dos 
defined in the file. That by file it means index.html and CS and the uh, the the style sheet here main.css. It's like in here. So there's none in there. So index.html is where all of the to dos are. Yeah, we can see the to dos all in here. So we're gonna have to move our way through that file uh, pretty steadily, and we'll probably be able to accomplish all of these requirements. Um, we want to resize and optimize images. Uh, that's excellent. And then we want to create a new fav icon that better represents the page as we've designed it. So um, fav icon creation is always a little bit tricky, but, uh, but we, we usually use a service and there are a lot of them. Um, if you do a Google search for fav icon generator, there are tons of them. For the most part, um, it, any of them work just fine. Uh, for the most part, I've used uh, this dynamic drive uh, favicon generator for years now. Um, that's great. Uh, if you want a more modern one, click on one of these newer ones that will give you more, the, you know, the icons for all of the different mobile devices and everything too. Um, and, you know, th these are not like dangerous to use and stuff. I wouldn't install an application just from anywhere to do it, but if you're uploading a file to the web, it's not too bad. So we can, we'll probably use this one and just give it a shot and see how it see how it works so um, so now that we've kind of covered all the things that we have to do and to work on we can go in here and we can kind of take a look at the index.html file and see what all it has uh, we have to do's we have all these sections where we um, have to get you know some stuff to to show up in here um, and look good and be visually pleasing, eye pleasing, you know. Um, we have a header. Uh, we want to use some kind of probably, you know, attention grabbing header and everything. Um, and then we need to do the, the video conversions and stuff. So most of this is actually the same kind of coding and design that we've done over the past couple of, of projects, you know. Um, we want to add some colors, we want to add some sizing, we want to probably use a little bit of positioning and you know make something that that is read reads well to a user and draws the user's attention to the most important parts of the site there are a few tricky things like how we're going to do this persistent aside um, you know it says that we want to use fixed or sticky positioning um, we uh, might want to use the hover pseudo selector to trigger a height or width changes so you know there's there's things like that um, we also can uh, work on the video conversion. Um, and the video conversion does take a little while to accomplish and is a somewhat complicated part of this assignment. Um, but once we have the video up in here, then it's, it's pretty easy to work with. So I think I'm gonna start out actually by jumping to do the video conversion before I start really worrying about styling and things like that and just try to get all of the content on the page because if I if I open up this file in a, a preview here we can see that we've got you know we have downloads available and the downloads are pointing to files that don't exist right now right the the mp4 the webm version exists but we can name the mp4 version to match that but we don't have like a watch and everything and we don't have images put in here so let's Let's focus on, on completing those things. And really to get started, let's do the complicated part. Let's just jump right in and get GitHub going and, um, and, and actually clone this repository locally. So if you run the GitHub app, it will ask you to sign into GitHub and you will be presented with this page. So this is the GitHub desktop application running right here. And I'm gonna click clone a repository and it's going to show me repos that I have. And so I'm going to look for watch3010-embedded media, and I want to get my repository with my account, so I have access to the core repository too. You'll only have your repository here. And I want to say clone, but I also want to choose a path. And so I like to keep my projects in here. Um, I'm gonna keep this in the uh, temp directory here uh, where I'm gonna be able to clone. So. I'm going to go ahead and use that local path to clone. You should set it to whatever local path you want to clone to. Um, 
and then it's going to clone my files in there. Now, what, what exactly does that mean that it's going to clone my files in there? It's going to copy this repository from GitHub and make a copy of it. Let's see if it actually cloned it. So here is my file browser, and I've actually already done the conversion to save us time, but here's my project directory that I asked it to clone, and here's all my files. So in here, if I twirl down here, here is the video file. And if I do a preview, um, oh, I can't preview the WebM because it's in WebM format. So that's one of the downsides of WebM format. Not all systems can play WebM natively. Um, so, but if I, for example, if I try to preview this monkey loop, I can preview that on my local computer, no problem, because it's already an MP4 file. So that's a loop that I could use in my design if I wanted to. Um, so I want to convert this WebM file into an MP4. And so to do that, I'm going to use Handbrake. And so this is Handbrake that I've just opened up here. Um, Handbrake allows you to convert a file into another file. So what you can do is open a source file. And I've already downloaded and converted the, the WebM of this just to save time on this, on this demo. But um, you could go to uh, anywhere and convert um, whatever files you needed on your machine. So here is video here. And um, you could uh, select this WebM file, hit open. You want to make sure that you set, you browse and set your uh, files to go to somewhere else here. Um, so that they go into the proper location when you actually convert them. And now you can, uh, you can, you can hit start and it will begin the conversion. So I'm not going to do that now because I've already done the conversion. So instead I am just going to, uh, copy this file in here. Uh, Go in here and drop this file in, and that will allow me to um, that will allow me to get enough of uh, a conversion going on for this MP4. So now, well, now if I preview this file, I can see this is the actual movie, and. I can preview the whole movie locally now, now that it's converted into MP4. So that's all fine and dandy. Um, what about getting it actually all the way to Code Envy where I'm doing my web development? Um, well, right now, if I click back into uh, GitHub, you notice that now under changes here, it shows me this file that I've changed. And it says that it's a plus, which means that it's it's been added. So I'm going to say, um, converted movie to mp4 and that's going to be my commit message and I'm going to just commit to master and it committed and then I'm going to push origin and that way it's going to actually put this file up here in my copy of this repository so I I cloned the repo, I opened up Handbrake and did the conversion of the file using Handbrake. Once that finished, then I copied the file or it output the file just into the media directory here in my project. So here's the, the MP4 file that got put in there. That change to my repository was detected by the github.com desktop application and I was able to commit that change and then push to origin and that has now finished up. So if I click back here to github.com and refresh, I can go into my media and video and now I can see that I have munca1080p.mp4 is actually in my video folder up here on GitHub because I pushed 
the changes from my local computer all the way up to GitHub. So now I need to actually get those changes onto Code Envy. So how do I do that? Well, with Code Envy, if I go to Git, and actually it doesn't show it here, but if I select the um, repo here and I go to Git and I say remotes, I can pull the changes from that remote. So I pushed them from my local computer to GitHub and now on Code Envy I'm going to pull them from GitHub to the Code Envy computer so that I can work with them and develop it. So I'm going to pull and it says choose remote repository, origin is what I want and I just want master branch so I just need to say pull and what's going to happen is that we should see the mp4 show up here on the side and there it is right there so we saw that we also got a message successfully pulled um, so that's great I'm going to minimize these messages again and so now we have this uh, monca 1080p.mp4 which is right here in the video folder exactly where we expect it to be we've done the file conversion and we've completed that portion of the project so now we can get in and we can start really working with this project to fill in all of the details so I want to go through and fill in the actual HTML stuff because I think that's the uh, the trickiest to do uh, work with so um, for example here on uh, the watch section we have embed WebM and MPR, MP4 video with full controls for convenient and attractive video viewing experience. So uh, to embed the video, we're going to actually use the video tag, uh, which works like that. Uh, there's a closing video tag as well. And then um, this will actually embed the player. Uh, the video tag can take several attributes the only one that we're going to use right now is controls, which if you put controls, it will make the playback controls show. If you do not put the controls, then the video will sort of embed and play as if it was an image. It won't have direct playback controls uh, that, that, that you can use. Uh, you could write your own controls with JavaScript or something like that if you wanted to. Um, also within the tag, it's important to have a uh, statement um, for people whose browsers might not uh, support HTML5 video players. Um, so you can, you can provide that. And since we're providing download links regardless below, we won't really um, worry about providing a link. But you could, uh, often in this, in this paragraph, it would be normal to provide a download link for the video itself. So this works and everything, but the only issue is that it won't, it doesn't actually have anything to show right now. Uh, so if we were to preview this, um, we would have a video player, but we don't have anything actually to show in the video player. So what, we'll, what we need to do is define some source tags uh, with their proper attributes. So what we need to do now is add in the source attribute to say where the file is. And then we're also going to need to add in the type attribute to say what kind of file it is. So the first source that we could list is the WebM. And we want to use a relative link to this WebM file that's here. And we can see that um, that needs to be relative to the index.html file. So index.html is in the root directory of our project, meaning it's in the main directory, the base directory of our project, the first directory in our project. Then there's a directory called media, and a directory, and inside of that is a directory called video, and inside of that are the files that we want. So we could reference this by saying media, video, so those are the two directories, and then the file name that we want is munka, 1080p dot webm and the type is video slash webm and then we want to define another source and it's in the same directory and it has almost the exact same name except it's an mp4 file so this is a different video codec 
and the type would equal video slash mp4. These are what, what are known as MIME types, uh, multimedia encoding types. Um, that's not actually what MIME stands for, but that's, that's what they are. Um, so now, if we go and refresh our preview here, we should see that we have a video that comes, and it shows the video at its default size. So um, we can uh, hit play, and we will get that video to show properly. Now we can adjust the size of this with CSS or with attributes on the video controls. Probably CSS is the more flexible way to do it, but uh, since we've done that, we'll go ahead and get rid of that to do, and um, that is what we need to do to make the video show up. So then we also need to make the audio show up, and if we twirl down this audio directory, we can see that we have the Munka soundtrack, uh, and we can definitely uh, add in an audio player here. And to do that, we use the audio tag. And the audio tag is cool because it works basically just like the video tag. So we're going to put the controls onto it. Uh, then we're going to add in our paragraph. Your browser does not support HTML5 audio playback. Although hopefully that won't be very many people at all who would ever see that. And then source is going to be, again, media, but this time slash audio slash Munka soundtrack dot mp3. And then type equals audio slash mp3. And so now we should actually be able to see that we have the audio player showing up as well. So let's refresh. There's the video player. There's the audio player. If we hit play, we can actually hear the Munka soundtrack. So pretty cool. Um, that is a little clip of the theme music and everything. So. At this point, uh, we basically, it looks like this to-do is all about styling. Um, we have to use the proper images for these images here. And um, so this is this is worthwhile to check out. So these images of the Wayback uh, creators, uh, the people who made this movie, they need to be um, uh, shown. And if we look here, they're in an image directory and then in a Wayback directory, and then we have them here with names. And um, notice that the names aren't totally standardized. Like this one has a capital and uses a dash, but these other ones use underscores. So, and we also have GIF, JPEG, and PNGs for each one. For all of the images in our system here, we have GIF, JPEGs, and PNGs. It's worthwhile for you to um, think about which image should we use. Now, these are images that are photographs of um, of people and so we probably want to use JPEG images uh, to get the best quality for photograph versus size. The PNGs would look really good but they would be very large. The GIFs would be not necessarily very large but they would not look very good if we actually look at them. Um, and so we can uh, definitely see this difference if we go in here and um, we look at the Wayback images here. Here's the GIF um, you can see that it's it's not very smooth here, like the background gradient is all kind of harsh and everything. Um, at the JPEG, it looks much more smooth like a photograph would look. And the PNG looks pretty much the same as the JPEG, but notice that the PNG is almost twice the size of the JPEG. It's like 88K bigger than the JPEG. So these file sizes are not, are not the best. Um, so we want to... Uh, probably use JPEGs instead of PNGs, and we probably want to use um, probably want to use uh, well just the JPEGs instead of the PNGs, and not the GIFs for sure because they're bad. So uh, Pratik Solanki, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing names, but um, that is in the image slash Wayback directory, and then Pratik. JPEG. So each of these are going to be found in the same directory, image slash Wayback slash Nita Ravalji. 
1.jpg. So again, you got to pay very close um, attention to the file name. And then this is going to be image wayback slash y'all parmar dot jpeg. So now if we refresh, we should see, yeah, we see these headshots here. Now we could resize these with CSS. We can position them and everything. And you're going to need to do that uh, to make everything look really good um, on this page. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that stuff. But for the most part, I think that means that all of our basic stuff is, uh, is fixed. Um, our downloads work. They're pointing to the right files. Uh, we kept our file naming consistent, so the MP4 works. We didn't have to edit that at all. Um, and we actually uh, have um, the, the links, the internal page links already working here so that we can see that they're they're successfully moving us down the page so that is pretty cool um, we can now move on to other parts of this project so if we look back at the requirements here and kinda look through um, you know we've done a whole bunch of stuff we've um, offered the video uh, we've set up the audio um, you know we can uh, we've got all the images in place if we go back to the HTML we can start working our way through and trying to work with styles and so forth and as we're working with styles um, you know we can create styles we can leverage different um, elements here uh, like for example um, we could say this monk blue monkey maybe is uh, a cool image for the header so we could easily open up our style sheet and uh, so right now the text color is all green. We probably don't want that. Um, but I like to set margin to zero and padding to zero sometimes just to make sure that I don't have any extra space that I don't anticipate there. Um, but we could, looking at this, uh, we could style this header tag and um, we could say something like header and we could set a height to be something like 300 pixels and we could set a background to be the image, image slash monka blue monkey dot JPEG. And you know, you can put quotes around that or not either way. Um, and then uh, we can say like background uh, position is center center. So we want the image centered maybe for this first try. Um, background repeat I'm going to say no repeat because um, we don't want the image to repeat and we want to say background size and we want it to make sure to cover um, that this entire background size so let's um, just sort of take a look at what that looks like when we refresh oh and we we have some kind of issue we, we got the height but we didn't get our background image there. So I imagine that we probably wrote um, our URL wrong. So we can see here that it's not really um, showing us. If we right click or alt click, um, we can say open a new tab and it will open up this image. But it says, oh, I can't find um, this image. So let's, oh, see, it's looking for CSS slash image slash monka blue monkey. But that, that, that file doesn't exist in the CSS. So what we actually forgot was that we're inside the CSS directory. So we have to do a dot dot slash, which takes us up out of the CSS directory. This is a really important code to remember the dot dot slash. It takes us out of the CSS directory back up to this main level. And then we go into the image directory and then to the file monka blue monkey. So now if we refresh, we should see our image showing up there. Yeah, and it does. And so now we have an image in the background and we have all of our text and content on the foreground. And we can uh, play around even more um, with it. Uh, like we could say padding and um, with padding we can, we can actually specify all of the padding. So we can do top, um, which we could say is uh, 100 pixels. And then uh, right could be 20 pixels. 
uh, bottom could be 20 pixels and left could be 20 pixels and that would you know make something like that appear there are a lot of other things that you could do to arrange this text inside of this heading or header excuse me um, and you can style all these elements inside of the header too so you can make them look pretty much however you want and notice that the image does shift around a little bit because it, it is uh, set to cover the entire background so it will resize so this needs to be a fairly large image you want to be sparse about doing too many of these large images on a page because you don't want it to really um, take up too much file size to download uh, your pages and everything so um, keep in mind when you're using these this size of images um, but sometimes it can be really striking for visual uh, styling and so forth um, remember too that you can always style these things inside of this so if for example we wanted to um, style the uh, this h1 um, we could put a style on it just now we could say like background is uh, white and we can say padding is five pixels and notice that now it made it like a bar across there so we can definitely read this no matter what image is behind it instead of saying white we could always use RGBA um, to get an opa you know an opacity on the background and we say 255 255 255 which is white and then we can say 0 0.4 which is semi transparent or 0 0.8 which is less transparent six maybe something like that so um, there's a lot of techniques uh, that we can use to present the information the way that we want to uh, we do need to make sure that we're breaking up uh, the section so you know we want to create an elegant presentation for the content so we want to try to make something that looks decent for the user um, and we want to make sure that we we can see these sections you know so as you go through here if you look we've got the header and then we've got a um, an aside uh, let's deal with that in a second but we've got the section watch the section listen and the section about and those are all IDs right so I think um, one thing that we might, uh, and then we have a footer, right? So it's, sometimes it's useful just to stub out some basic um, styles. So we can say we've got a header and a footer, um, and I'm just going to make the background on the footer uh, gray. And then um, we could stub out section uh, watch background yellow section about background cornflower blue <laughs> um, and then uh, section uh, sorry section listen now notice that because I'm not using a space I'm saying section pound listen or hash listen that that indicates the the section with the ID of listen and we're gonna say background on that should be uh, purple or oh, maybe we could just let's say by that <laughs> um, so now if we refresh so we can see that watch is yellow listen has turned violet about has turned cornflower blue and then footer has turned gray so we can really easily see wh where our sections are and we could start um, styling them and we could notice something like oh they all need more space on the inside they all need a padding so it might be beneficial to make just a generic section style and we could just do like we could say padding top is um, you know say 50 pixels because we always want a, a bit more space at top padding bottom is 25 pixels and then padding left is uh, 10 pixels and padding right is 10 pixels so this will keep us from bumping up against the edges of our backgrounds and give us a little more space you know between them we could also if we don't like the fact that they bump right into each other if we wanted them to have space so we can see the background through the page we could add some margins margin tops on them um, we could do all kinds of things but this is meant to be sort of a one-page scroller uh, and you you really should be experimenting with 
all of the skills that you've used over the past couple of weeks for CSS and everything, you should be experimenting uh, to get it all into um, you know, this page and try to use it all to the benefit of this page. Uh, so let's talk finally just a little bit about doing this sort of sticky aside um, with the social links, right? So we have this to do that says experiment with different ways of making this just sort of stick around all the time. So we have the aside with the ID social and then in it we have um, a decent amount of stuff, right? Um, so we could, uh, we could easily sort of do something along these lines where uh, I'll just put this up, up at the top of the file since we're working on it here. Um, and we could say aside pound social. Uh, we could give it a background is um, lime. The uh, width could be 200 px. Height can be uh, 300 px. Uh, position could be absolute. Uh, top could be 50px, right could be 20px. So it'll basically hover in the top right of the screen. And if we refresh here, we see that that's actually what we get. And it, it stays there, but it, the position is absolute, but it's, it's still scrolling. If we switch it and make this position fixed, then it will actually not scroll with us. It'll just stay there the whole time. Which, you know, is okay, but the problem is that it, um, it can overlap this video and stuff, and it can be kind of tough to get rid of, right? Like, even on a, on a pretty wide screen, it's going to overlap a little bit, right? So there, there are ways that we could um, make this less obnoxious, uh, you know, in general, right? Um, we could uh, write a fairly simple style uh, that could just say, like, look, the, um, this, let's hide the list and make it only show when you hover over uh, the share. So this nav could be hidden, and then I could say, or not nav, excuse me, this unordered list here, social links could be sh hidden until you hover over uh, this aside itself. So we could say aside social hover, and usually that's where we stop um, styling like hovers for links and things, but uh, we could add on ul.social links. Did I get that right? Let me verify that um, unordered list is social dash links is the class. So we want um, the when we hover over the aside, make the social links display block. Otherwise, make social links display none. So this is just a simple hover so that when we hover over the aside box, it shows the social links. And if we aren't hovering over it, the social link should disappear for us. So now it goes like that. And then when we hover over the social links, show. But the aside box doesn't actually disappear because right now we're giving the aside box a height. So we could say height auto. And that will help it a little bit, I believe. And so now when we go over the aside box, we can see these links and we could click them if we want to click them, uh, no problem. And they are persistent and they are reactive. Now there are a lot more things that you can do with this and I encourage you to look up uh, effects and tutorials online for different hover, hide show effects and things like that because you could do a ton of stuff. But even just right here, um, this is this is pretty decent and uh, my last tip is that on this one uh, you could make it so that when you hover over a side uh, social you actually get a little hand
by saying cursor pointer. And that would kind of let people know that they could click click in here. Although really it's only the links that you can click on. But at least they know that that, that thing is something that they could touch. So we've got a lot of the basic pieces of this in place. Uh, we could do a lot more about um, optimizing these images and so forth. And I want to finish out by creating the fave icon. Okay, so um, so if we uh, if we if we remember we were going to use um, this fave icon generator, uh, we have some images that we could consider using for a fave icon. Uh, I think that if we take a, a clip of this little monkey face, that would probably look pretty decent. So I'm going to just try that, and I'm going to open it up just in preview, and I'm just going to make a little selection. And I'm going to make sure that that selection is a square because fave icons always have to be squares. And I'm going to kind of put the monkey's little face in there. He's adorable. And, um, and then I'm just going to use the tools uh, to do a, a quick crop. And I'm going to go ahead and export that to a new file. Um, and I'm going to call it blue monkey underscore icon. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to choose a file and I'm going to choose that blue monkey icon file and I'm going to say create fave icon. Now you can generate the icons for everything or you can generate it only for the, the fave icon itself. Right now I'm only going to generate it for the fave icon itself, but um, I encourage you to look up the extra stuff to do that, right? Um, so now, uh, you can save this fave icon to the root directory of your site. And so uh, you want to say save link as. And we can go in here to uh, right here. And we're going to save it and call it faveicon.ico. I'm going to hit save and I'm going to replace this file. Um, and now. Uh, we can um, copy these meta tags and we can paste them into our index.html up here. Uh, and so we already have a fave icon here. So I'm just going to paste those in there. And those are two tags that they do the same thing. They just, uh, and in fact, I'm not going to say the slash before it because um, I don't want to. So one of them specifies a shortcut icon and one of them specifies a fave icon icon. Um, so that that's all good. Now, the one thing that I need to do is notice that that image isn't actually up in here. Uh, and so if I select image here, you can actually upload images directly on Code Envy, but you can't upload big files like videos. So if I just go to project and say upload file, then um, I can choose a file to upload and I can upload that icon file that I just saved and it will upload the file and put it in here, the, the small file, um, just so that it gets into my repo. Um, and then of course, I also need to um, upload the actual uh, fave icon, which I just downloaded. Um, and so let me, uh, let me do that as well. So that needs to go into the main directory so and replace this fave icon here. So I'm just going to uh, select the main directory there and then say project, upload file, choose that. I'm going to uh, go to uh, here and upload this fave icon, which you can see now that it's the monkey face that is showing there. Uh, so I'm going to just upload that. Uh, it won't upload because the item with the same name exists. I forgot to check this box. Uh, there's an overwrite if file exists box that you don't want to miss. So check that. Now it uploaded it and it kept the fave icon there. And if I hold shift and refresh, I won't see. Oh, there the, now the fave icon has changed. So you can see right here that um, this fave icon has now updated. So that process, we generated it, we had to save it down to our computer, we had to upload it back into Code Envy, 
um, and let it overwrite this fav icon file. And then we had to make sure, um, and then I went ahead and added the extra meta tag, um, which is a little extra, but it's a good bonus. Um, so that should uh, work for you to get the fav icon in. And the rest of these goals, you should be able to achieve using skills that we've worked on over the past couple weeks and pushing yourself further in terms of thinking about uh, how you can use um, CSS to do styles and layout and try to make something that looks like a real web page. So this should look like a real uh, single page web page and um, you should uh, explore different ways. I don't intend for you to have these ugly colors or this ugly share box like this. Uh, this was just meant to get you going on the technique so that you can move forward a little bit. So uh, good luck with the project. And um, when you're done, you can do this or you can do this anytime. Um, make sure that you uh, go to Git and say commit. And all of these different things have changed. And so we want to say um, initial work, uh, work on page build. And we're going to push those commits to origin. Don't forget to do that. And hit commit and it's going to go up there. And then after we do that, we should really go into our settings here and configure it to deploy GitHub pages from the master branch. Hit save. It will give us this URL, which I'm gonna copy the link and go back to my main page of my repo. I'm gonna paste this link into the website box there so that I can very conveniently click and try to open this and it has not yet deployed but I guarantee you that in a few minutes this this will be deployed look at even less than a few minutes this is deployed so uh, that is the entire project uh, walkthrough video it is not the entire project done so this project's gonna take a little bit more time you have to think through more design gonna have to work through uh, more pieces so give yourself enough time approach it chunk by chunk and it's not too bad all right Good luck. I look forward to seeing all of your awesome video sites uh, up and running. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.